Hello and welcome to another one of my videos and in this one I'm actually going to be doing my own HT leads to replace these ones in my Micra. Um, so basically I'm just going to go through the step by step things of what I've done to actually get to the point of making my own HT leads. So the first thing I've actually gone and done is, and um, this is actually before the video was actually started, is I've measured the HT leads. Now the, instead of using a measure or anything like that, I've used this technical bit of technology called string. <sighs> And basically all I've done is, is I've just taken the HT lead out of its actual compartment and basically just traced it back along its route and then just cut the string off where it needs to be cut. And basically I've just got four of these and I'm going to take them inside and show you how to make HT leads and that's what I'm actually going to be measuring um, HT leads off. So we'll go in the house and we'll go and make these HT leads up. So now for the actual um, building of the HT leads. Now there isn't actually that much in building the HT lead, they're pretty simple. All you need is some copper wire or some HT wire. This is actually, like I said, copper core with some decent insulation around it. This one's actually 7mm. Um, these are actually better than a lot of aftermarket um, HT leads because instead of using impregnated um, string they actually use like I say a copper core it's a lot lower resistance than that and also it's got a lot better lifespan so these normally outlast um, aftermarket ones as in the cheapy ones you normally get at Halfords you'll then need a spark plug connector which is just one of these spark plug goes in there cable goes in there and also a distributor cap um, connector these come in of a wide range of formats. This is a 90 degree one as you can tell and this is just a straight one but they come 90 degree, 45 degree and so on and so forth depending on your application. But yeah that's all you need and also two rubber boots just to insulate the, the actual connections from anything else. So first off what you need to do is is we need to actually free up some of the cable. Now I've already cut this to length but all I've done is use the bit of string that I measured the spark plug lead with and cut it with a bit around about two or three inches extra on the end. Um, then what we're going to do is we're just going to break the insulation off so we've got a bit of bare cable. Now I have got a pair of wire strippers down here but they're not too good with this thick of a cable but once you get them broke there we go. And there's your cable and all you're going to do with this is twist it around and bend it back over itself easy as that and then what you do is you take one of the connections which we're going to go for the spark plug connection first and we're just going to slot this cable into there like so and just make sure it's well and truly in there as we can see there and what we're going to do is we're going to use the crimps and we're actually going to crimp these two ends of this connector up to actually fasten it in. So if we go here we've got the crimping one there and we'll just go back to the there and just crimp it down. They're not the best crimpers these ones actually, they're, they're pretty dire but they do the job. I've got a little trick anyway to help them in, so just crimp them down as hard as you can. And then that's actually crimped pretty well for what it is. I'm going to basically epoxy these in as well just to give it a bit extra reinforcement, but that's it done. And before we forget, you also have to feed on the plastic ends because if you put both the ends on and don't feed these two, insulating boots on you're up well you're up the creek without a paddle basically more so if you've actually glued the ends in but simple as that now this one's a bit harder because you have to go through a 90 degree angle and get the cable up but it should come through there and then just push it out pull it out a bit more for the distributor cap side it's exactly the same just get your little connector Put the connector, put the cable into the connector, and then just get your crimps and crimp it as best you can. More so when your crimpers are, like I said, not that good of a quality, but uh, well, and then just crimp it as hard as you can to get it in there and just make sure it's 
I'm truly crimped. That is the worst crimping in the world right there. But anyway, turn the other way and try and smarten that up. And there we go, that's that crimped and it's not actually moving anyway. I'm even though it doesn't look well crimped, it is pretty much well in there. Now, that's basically it. It's as easy as that. And then all you do is you just move the boots back over, over the ends, and you'll have some HT leads. Now, before I'm actually going to do this, I'm going to put some epoxy resin just on the ends here, just to make doubly sure these aren't going to move out. But what you'll be left with is a lovely set of HT leads, which these ones have already been done. Um, if I can just take the collar off this one, you can see I've just basically put some glue around the end here just to actually hold the um, the lead even more securely within the actual connector. And I've gone over these with a um, multimeter just to check the continuity and stuff, and they've all got very good connections on them. And the resistance is actually very low, they're in around about I would say 10 ohms or something which is quite a lot lower than a lot of um, standard HT leads and to think these only cost me 12 quid to make if you went for some of these mega core things or whatever you know, these special multi core spark plugs which to be honest do exactly the same job but cost 80 quid which I don't get you might as well just go and make your own it's a hell of a lot cheaper but anyway with those done, I shall now go out to the car and I shall go out and replace them and see if they actually make any difference to the, the actual engine. I'm expecting the engine to run a bit smoother and I've also heard the, uh, the responsiveness of the engine does improve, so we shall see that and see if it actually works. So let's go back outside and stick these on the car. Okay, now with the HT leads made up, the first thing I'm going to do is actually start this with the original ones in and just see how it starts and see if actually replacing these ones with the, the ones I've made actually makes it start easier or anything. Just to do a bit of comparison, the, last, the, the biggest comparison is going to be how it drives and miles per gallon and stuff, but I shall go and start it now and then we'll swap them out and see what the difference is. It's not a bad sound engine this one, it's actually pretty tight so yeah, that's how it starts, it runs pretty smooth as well but we should change the HT leads now and see how we'll get on. So we have the first lead in here, which I've just basically done, um, I'll just take this out of the connector here, and basically all I'm going to do is, is just take each individual one off and replace them along the way, so the next one is this one. Mm. Now after a bit of fettling we've got them all in and secure, so next step now is to actually see if these actually work, so fingers crossed. <laughs> And it works! I believe it would all along. DIY HT leads. Take your lesson on how to make. They're cheaper than the ones you buy off eBay or all this pop, and they actually are better than the standard um, 
what shall we say, why you're impregnated cause. Now I'm not going to give a definite answer to whether if these are worth it or not until I've actually gone for a full ride and maybe done a week's worth of um, driving around backwards and forwards to work to see if the miles per gallon changes or not. But it's a start, we actually have it all set up there, it just shows you how easy it is to make your own HT leads. So go out and get some, the, like I say, £12 for this lot off eBay. I've actually used a bit too much cable here, I'm going to have to try and wrap it up and sort it out in some form or another. But anyway, for this video I'll leave it there and I will put another one up in a week's time to see how these are actually doing and if there is any differences in the performance of the car or the miles per gallon. So see you around and keep safe.